everyone it's Nancy hope everyone's doing well I have a new project um, Marlene from uniquely Ella's has a new shop she started creating beautiful beautiful digitals and I wanted to when I saw her uh, she just came out with the the document style um, tall uh, uh, um, I'm sorry digital kit it's called Dreaming of Spring, and I just fell in love with it, and I wanted to make a tall journal uh, with it. So I'm going to show you some of the pages. This is one of the pages here, and then um, I'll show you the digital. I already folded them here, and uh, I thought we could make a document-style um, journal together, and then uh, we'll make some ephemera and things to go inside. Uh, and so it, it'll be a few parts, this uh, project. I don't know how many videos it'll take, but we'll do as many as we need to. And so, like I said, it's Uniquely Ella Digitals, and the kit's called Dreaming of Spring, and it's beautiful blues and creams, and some there's some pinks in there, and it's corals, and it's just gorgeous. Um, also, I'll show you I used... Uh, a wallpaper from Ruby and Pearl. I'll let you know what kit that came from. Uh, I used some embossed papers from Sweet Peak Curiosities, and I'll have everything linked below. And then Taylor made journals, my favorite, favorite lace doily digital, and chapter one, and um, what else did I? And then I had a couple freebies. I had a freebie like this one here. Um, I've had a long time, and I don't know if it's available. It was a freebie from uh, uh, Rachel from Roxy Creations. I'm not sure if you can even get it. It might be on her, if she has a website, I thought. I'm not sure. I've had it a long time. So I'm using this one, too. Maybe another one in there, like a plain one that I don't remember where it came from. Because, you know, a lot of the gals that make digitals, they're so generous in giving us a free one now and then. So... I don't have a real good system on, you know, trying to figure out who gave me what. So, um, yeah, we're going to do that and uh, make a cover. Uh, so if you want to uh, just, you know, watch and then I'll show you what we're going to need. And then we can at least uh, get the cover together, maybe even get the signature put in. We'll see how far we get. Okay. So first of all. I wanted to make the cover. I wanted to be a flexible cover, not a have uh, not a hard cover. So I have uh, cardstock in different colors. Um, this is Stampin' Up cardstock, but you don't have to have the blue cardstock. You can use Manila folder. You can use any kind of card, whatever you want. I, it's just this is. Um, I'm not sure the weight, it might be 60 GSM, I'm not sure, but this cardstock is Stampin' Up cardstock. So, and in, in case you do have Stampin' Up cardstock or you can get it, this color is blue bushel, blueberry bushel. That's what this is, because I thought it went well with the, with the uh, colors of the kit. So, but like I said, if you don't have a pretty, you know, blue cardstock or you don't want to use a blue cardstock, then just use manila folder or, you know, off-white cardstock. Whatever you want to use, it doesn't matter. It's just something that's a little sturdier, but once we put paper on it, it's going to get even more sturdy. But yet it'll be very flexible. You see, it'll be very flexible to accommodate as it gets a little chunky. So first I'm going to show you what I did. <clears throat> so I have my cardstock, and um, you'll need a scoring tool. Now, this is my cutter, but it also has a score blade on it. So if you don't have a, a cutting paper cutter with a score blade, then maybe you have uh, just a scoring board. So whatever you have, okay? And um, so the first thing I did was, this is an 8.5 by 11 U.S. size. So you have to decide if you're in um, Europe, you have to decide what size your, your uh, cardstock is. So what I did was... Uh, like I said, eight and a half by 11. So um, I wanted to find the middle, the middle, okay? So that would be four and a quarter. So what I did was I found four and a quarter here 
and I took the score blade and I went back and forth a couple times, okay? Then without moving the paper yet, I lifted it up and what I did was from that score line I just made, I moved like um, an eighth of an inch to the right and scored again and then go back to the center line where you where you scored originally and then go an eighth of an inch this way and score again. So you have three score lines in the middle. The one in the very middle, one an eighth of an inch to the right of it, of the original, and an eighth inch, one to the eighth of inch um, from the, on the left, okay? So then what I did was I kind of met these edges here and kind of rolled this to kind of, if you can see it, it's not a flat spine. It's got some give in there. And that will help as we add the signature. It'll start to, so you can see, round around the pages and, and have some give to it. So that's a, a trick. Okay, so I have three score lines there. Um, so that's ready to go. Um, also, then um, I wanted to see what I wanted to do on the cover. And this is one of the pages from um, Marlene's Digital, and it's so pretty. So I wanted this on the cover, but I wanted this on the cover here, and then this part I was going to put here. Now, if you get the digital kit, you can obviously, uh, there's other pages, and you'll see once we put the signature together, um, you can pick any anything you want for the cover. But this is what I think is so pretty. So once again, U.S. size is 8.5 by 11. Um, I measured the pay, uh, what I wanted to put here, and um, I want to leave a slight border around the, around the cover. So I am going to cut my papers to, to go here and here four inches wide. Okay, so I line this up on four. And then I'm going to cut that off. And that's going to be on the cover. And then I want this one. Now this is a little wider because this is four, so this is going to be wider. I need to cut some off. So I'm going to flip it because I don't want to cut my bird. So I'm going to line this up to four and then cut off. So I'll save that strip because any paper strips or anything you have left, you're going to use and make a master board collage for tags and things like that. Okay, so that will be the covers. And then for the inside, this uh, find, you know, you can use one of the pages from her kit or maybe you have another digital kit you can use but like I said this was a freebie long long time ago from Rachel Roxy creation and I thought it was real nice now her pages being um, she's in Italy so she, they you know they have the European size it's slightly shorter here but I'm not worried about that because what we're gonna do is make a, a, a pocket down here and you're not gonna see that so I'm not worried about that so I cut once again, I trimmed it to four and gave myself a little border of my paper here. And we're going to put it like this on the inside. Okay, we're going to do that. So I cut this at four and four, whatever the length was, which is a little shorter, like I said, but we're going to put a pocket here so you're not going to see it. So cut your two pieces for your inside cover. Cut your two pieces for your outside, and then we'll continue on. So let me move this away. Okay, so what you're going to do um, is you're going to take your cover piece here, and you're going to glue this on. And I used, see, it fits perfectly. It fits perfectly, and it gives me a nice little blue border around here. So you're gonna glue this on here. Um, I use glue stick because I sewed with my sewing machine. If you don't sew and you don't have a sewing machine, just glue these on and just make sure you have 
whatever glue of your choice to make sure you have your edges glued down really well, okay? So this is your first step is then is to glue these down like this. Give yourself a little border all around. Glue those down really well, okay? Isn't that pretty? Oh, I just love this. So once you glue this down, then you're going to flip it over and you're going to take whatever other page you have that you want to put on the inside and you're going to do the same. Give yourself the same little border on both sides. Glue those down. And like I said, if you're not sewing, just glue it down well. Otherwise, I used glue stick for mine. Glued it down. And once, you know, that's, you know, you're going to let it dry. Okay. Then if you are going to sew, this is where I sew. So I'm going to sew all the way around and down here. Okay, and it's going to look like this. So here's my cover. I stitched down here and down here, and then I went all the way around here. And um, I love it. And then it caught the paper that we glued in here as well. And then just another little tip if you do um, stitch, where I started and stopped, I just put a little dot of glue, ever so slight, just to hold the threads so they don't come out. Um, so, and then, I don't know if you know, but when you sew on paper, and I run it through my machine on the top, you know, it's nice stitching here. And when you turn it over, it the paper gets kind of bumpy, sticks up a little lumpy. Um, the trick for that is, where's my bone folder? The trick for that is you just run your bone folder along the stitch lines all the way around and it flattens your paper and that looks it looks perfectly fine so that's what I would recommend get your base for your uh, cover do the score down the middle and then another score eighth of an inch to the right eighth of an inch to the left so you have three little score lines and it just gives you that roundness for the spine <clears throat> pick your paper and that's four by the full length, and it fits perfectly for U.S. size. And then um, pick your papers here, sew around or don't, just glue. And now we're ready to do um, the next step. So I'm just going to move this to the side. And let me show you the next step here. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so the next step is to, I, I thought, I didn't mind that this was shorter, but I already had in mind that I wanted to take a, a make a pocket here. So, I mean, if you don't have any laces or doilies or, um, fabric, you can use whatever you want to use paper. If you don't, you know, just see what you want to use. And what I did was I cut a piece of doily. I wanted, since this is a tall journal, I wanted the pocket to be a little deeper than usual. And so I laid this down and I had a door, um, like a, uh, a little, uh, dresser scarf. So I cut a piece off about that size and, uh, this length here. So you have a couple options too. Um, if you wanted to, you could have, somehow clip this in and as you stitched you could have stitched around it but I you know I didn't do that I, I it was easier for me to do what I'm doing here so what I'm going to use is a fabric tack or just use good glue if you have and what I'm going to do is run glue around here and here put that on there clip it and let it dry you don't um you can put a, a couple dots here in the middle. I would put some down the middle too. And I'll tell you why, because on this journal, I want to do the document style binding, which is where you dot, you uh, attach it, we'll show you later, I'll attach it here and down here. So here it will be open. So you need to make sure you put some fabric tack down the middle here and then here. So if you like, two ways. Um, you can glue it on like that and then 
you don't have anything coming out here. Or if you like a little bit hanging, which I, I do, I'm going to lower it a little bit so some, some of it is hanging down off the bottom. I'm going to lower it and glue it, and then the way I fix it, there'll be some hanging down here on the bottom, okay? So that's, that's what I want to do. That would be the next thing to do. Find yourself a piece of this, and then we'll put it on. Matter of fact, I can put it on now. So I have to decide. Um, I have to decide how far down I want it because I do want it hanging up, uh, hanging off. Hold on one second. My glue is stuck here, and I need to get this open. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to put this. Sometimes you can never tell the right or the wrong way, but I, and I don't think it really even matters. I really don't. Okay, so I would like some of it hanging off. So I think what I'm going to do, let's see. First, you have to decide how much you want hanging off. Do you want a lot? Or maybe you have a pretty scalloped edge that you want some hanging off. So I don't need a lot hanging off, but I would like some. So something like that, and then um, see if you have yourself some clips to hold it in place for a little bit. Get some of that. Okay, so once I decide what I want, I'm going to start to put some glue here. Just down the sides, along the bottom, and you can go right over your stitching here. Okay, and then I'm going to go a little bit down the middle, and then down the side here. Okay, that should be good. I don't want to put a ton, but enough to hold it. All right, so now I'm going to lay this on. Do one side here. And I like some hanging down, not a lot hanging off, but I want some of it hanging off and it's not uneven and that doesn't bother me I think that just adds to the character of the journal so let's just get that pushed down see how that looks yeah just a little bit I don't need a lot hanging down but just a little it's a little okay and so when you have it where you want it just want to put some clips there to hold it while it dries all around. We get a couple more clips. Like I said, if you want to stitch it on, go right ahead. These clips I got at the dollar store, so they're kind of nice. And I bought two sets because sometimes you just need a bunch, right? Okay, I think that's good. And that'll stay fine in the middle. So we're going to let that dry for now. And in the meantime, I want to show you the, the signature. So I put together 10 pages, 10 pages, and I think that's good. You can do what you want, but I think that is a good amount because it's just going to get thicker 
as you we put ephemera and pockets and tucks and things like that. So I already have my signature together. So I'm going to show you um, and then you'll see the digital. So this is one of Marlene's from her Dreaming of Spring. It's a beautiful background type page. Okay, so uh, I have that as my first page. And then on this page here, this is one of, um, this is from chapter one. It's in her, uh, I'm sorry, vintage French invoices, I believe. I use something from the vintage French invoices and the vintage French florals. So this might be from the French florals, actually, now that I'm thinking, I'm, I think. So that's my first page that I have. That's from Marlene Uniquely Ella. Then the next page, this is another page from uh, Marlene's kit. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh my gosh, I love this paper. I love her designs. And then on the back of that one, I used one of um, Sweet Pea Curiosity's Marisa. Uh, her embossed papers. So that's one of her embossed papers on this side. And then the next page I printed on vellum. This is a piece of vellum. And I found this picture of this beautiful vase with white and blue flowers. So I printed this on vellum. Uh, so that's my next page. And it looks real pretty over the next page, which is one of my favorite favorites. The um, lace do vintage lace doilies, <clears throat> excuse me, vintage lace doilies from Taylor Made Journals. So that's my next page there, one of those, and it looks really nice with the vellum showing. You know, you can see the. It doesn't take away from the flowers. So that's my next page here, and on the back of that is again one of Marlene's um, background pages from the kit. The next page is another page from Marlene's kit. I just love these colors and images. They're so pretty. So that's another page. And then on the back of that one, um, I'm not sure where this came from. Um, it's just a, like a watercolor, full watercolor background, but you could use coffee dyed paper, or whatever you have. So just something plain there. And then here's another page of the digital Marlene's, The Dreaming of Spring. And then on the back of that, uh, I put one of her background pages. And then the next page is another page from the digital kit. And then on the back of that one, this was another, I don't know, it's just a lined paper with blues and some creams. I don't know where it came, what this came from, but it's I did uh, back it with some lines and then here's here's that page that we used for the cover um, so that was my cover page and then on the back of that one what did I print um, I printed a background page from her kid the next one this is from um, Heather Ruby and Pearl this is from um, Number, the kit is, oh, let's see, what is it called? Number 12 Vintage Wallpapers, because she has quite a few wallpaper kits. So this one is the number 12 Vintage Wallpaper. So I figured that went really well. And then on the back of that, it was a another digital that I got free. I I almost want to say it's from Amanda Scrimp and Mommy. I'm not sure it was a free. I think it was free. I'm not sure. But like I said, use any kind of digital that you have. And then here's another page from the original kit, Dreaming of Spring. And then I printed um, embossed paper from Sweet Pea Curiosity. So this is my 10-page uh, journal insert, okay? Let me see... If we have time to sew the signature in, um, I have about six minutes left. I can at least explain it to you. So once you have your pages together the way you want, um, and they're all, you know, even, ready to go, 
um, I'm going to use the document style binding and I think a few girls have shown this, but you know, who sh showed it recently was Rachel from Roxy Creations on her antique document journal she was working on. So if you need to see how to do that, but I'm going to show you how, but I wanted to show you this. This is um, beautiful hand dyed silk ribbon that I purchased from on Etsy from Color Kissed Silk LLC Etsy shop. Um, I, I now will list it, but, um, I picked this color to go with this kit and I think I did, I think I did pretty good. It's got the, the blues and the, and the creams and the beige, and it's just so gorgeous. So this is what we're going to use to bind it. Uh, so don't know if we have time to do it, but let me check here. Let me take these off. And I'm not, a, I'm not a professional by no means, so if you don't like the document binding, you don't have to do that, okay? Still will dry, but I just have a little bit hanging out, and I think that's so pretty. You see it? A little string, I'll fix that. But so what I, what I suggest to do is take a pencil, which I will find my pencil here in a second, and what I'm going to do is measure down about an inch and a half. Actually, could even go an inch, really. But maybe an inch and a quarter. I really don't think it matters. But um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go an inch. Uh, do an inch and a quarter from the top to here. An inch and a quarter. And in the spine, I'm just going to put a pencil mark there, inch and a quarter. And then on the bottom, not the bottom of from the paper, not from my lace hanging out, but from the paper, I'm going to somehow make a mark here with the pencil. I'm actually hitting the, the doily, but I'm marking it up so I can see my dot right there. And you're not going to see that because it's going to be sewn. But let me just make a little darker dot with some. Okay, now I see my. So that's that's our marks. So that's an inch and a quarter from the bottom up, inch and a quarter. I'm sorry, inch and a quarter from the bottom up, inch and a quarter from the top. Okay, so then what you want to do is get your awl or your whatever you use to make your holes okay and I'm gonna do that and we're gonna poke a hole oops I want to hit my table what? um Poke a hole in there. And I'm going to go through because I need a pretty good size hole. So I did that. And you're not going to see that. That's not going to make a difference. So don't worry about that. Okay. So I have a hole there and a hole there. That's all we need to do for now. Hold on to your awl because we might need that to help poke the... Um, the ribbon through okay so let me see if we can do it in the time I have left and then we'll go on we'll make the next video um, okay so let's see find the end don't know where the end is here they tie it up so pretty I think I'm gonna have to take this off kind of lightly see where it starts. Here's an end here. Okay. All right. And then what I do is I just wind all this around a piece of file folder just to keep it nice. Okay. So then you have your, um, your signature. And I think many of you have done this before. 
So make sure you have it right side up. Make sure it's all in, in place here. And then put this in and get it lined up. Make sure it's right where you want it to be. And then clip it with your clips. Okay, and if, if your pages hang over a little bit, I... I mean, if you want to trim them, you can trim them. But you know what? Once we start adding things to this, um, I, that's not going to bother me because we might even put some lace trim or something around here. I'm not sure. But um, I did not trim those pages down because I didn't want to. So just make sure. And it's going to pretty much line up with the top. And actually, it's probably going to make your pages stick out a little more towards the bottom because of the lace. So um, you might want to, you know, check your pages and see if you don't like them coming out a little bit over the side here. Then before you sew this in, trim this. Um, otherwise, um, I think I might trim a little bit. So let me do that. And then in the next video, we're going to actually sew this in. So get this far and then I'll come back with the next video and then we'll finish sewing this in and get going on the journal, okay? So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.